Hey there everybody, Eric from Outer Limitless coming at you today with another knife video. Now today is one of those beautiful late summer days. The humidity is starting to die off, the temperatures are coming down a little bit, but it's just absolutely gorgeous. I'm lucky enough to be able to come out to one of my favorite spots here with my kids. They're up there in the woods chilling out in the hammock hanging out for a little bit. I thought I'd come down here and show you one of my most recently acquired blades. This blade I'm going to show you today is a Swamp Rat Custom Shop Ratman Do. Now I've had this for a little while now, actually only a couple of weeks, but very, very early on this has shown me that it is a wonderful blade, extremely comfortable, very high quality, and something that you absolutely need to see. Now this Custom Shop Ratman Do was not brand new, but it basically could have been considered brand new. Um, I did acquire this from somebody online who had previously owned it, but um, you know, it came to me in excellent condition. Uh, overall, this particular blade has a slightly different shape than a typical Ratman do, and that's kind of why it is out of the custom shop. Now, right off the get-go, um, you'll see that, you know, the blade is not in perfect condition. It has considerable amount of use on it, and that is because ever since I've gotten my hands on this, I have used it literally every single day for something or another. So I've already put quite a lot of use on this so um, and I can tell you right from the very first minute I held this I knew I was going to like it and now after having used it for a couple of weeks it is a wonderful wonderful blade. So if you've been watching my channel you probably realize that I like a blade for a camp typical camp knife in the six six and a half inch blade size so this for me was a little bit smaller than what I typically gravitate towards but the reason why I liked this I've been doing a lot of backpacking, which for me, I really don't want to bring a larger knife. I kind of want to cut down on as much weight as I can. Yet at the same time, I really wanted a blade that was suitable for most camp and wilderness situations. Something that would be strong enough, durable enough, sharp enough. I mean, you know, could I have carried a Mora if I really wanted to cut down on weight? Yeah, sure. Um, I've considered that a number of times and I have at different times, but I found it left me just a little bit lacking. I wanted a little bit more sturdiness, a little bit more size. And so this for me was a great option. It was right in between something that was lighter weight and something that was strong enough to really do those tasks that I was looking to perform. Now the overall blade length of a Ratman Dew is about five and a quarter inches. But that finger choil takes between three quarters and an inch off of the overall blade length. So it rounds out on the cutting edge at roughly about four and a half inches. As I have mentioned, this does have a finger choil. It has a distal tapered blade. So this just tapers ever so slightly all the way from the handle all the way down to the point. And it actually does increase as it goes further down the spine of the knife. So you'll see it's just this ever so slight taper from one end all the way to the other. And this has a very, very fine point on it. So it is not likely to be an extremely strong tip, but it is definitely very refined. Now, I don't know if you'd consider this to be a clip point. It is slightly clip point. I think you may actually refer to this as a trailing point where it's a longer sweep. Um, but I really, I have greatly enjoyed this blade shape. I typically like a drop point knife, uh, but for this particular uh, application, this blade size range, and this knife in particular, I just absolutely love this nice trailing point. This particular knife does have a convex edge. It's a full flat grind down to a convex edge so there is no secondary bevel per se it just is ground right down and then sweeps so gently down into that convex grind at the base of the knife this blade steel is swamp rats sr 101 it is a proprietary steel that is somewhat of a tool steel um, after using it i can tell you that it it definitely holds an edge very well um, but I don't know, I have a convex edge on my blade and I have done a little bit of damage. I did some very light batoning with it and I created a little bit of a wrinkle down at that lower edge. I probably should have been a little more careful but I really wasn't batoning anything serious. Um, but I did do a little bit of damage so I don't know, uh, you know, I've heard a lot about this steel being an excellent steel. Um, it definitely has held an edge very, very nicely 
but I've polished the edge up just a little bit to try to show you what damage did occur. So this is going to be very, very subtle, but if you look in front of my finger there, you'll see this one spot where it didn't quite polish up. And that spot there is where there's just the ever so slightest wrinkle in the edge of the blade now. I mean, it didn't break, it didn't, I mean, I guess I, guess I could say it sort of just bent a little bit and sort of waved on me. And that's why you'll see the entire edge is very well polished except for that one spot where I was using basically a flat ceramic rod to try to polish this edge. And you can see where the rod was not able to hit that one spot. And then I'll just flip the blade over real quick and show you the other side, which is, you know, it's a little harder to see, but right there in front of my thumb, you may notice that it just has the ever so slightest looking wrinkle. So anyway, I mean, overall, this blade has been very good. Um, it's overall very, very sharp. Um, you can do some really nice detailed work with it. I've done some carving. I'll do a little bit more today so you can kind of see. Um, it's extremely comfortable in the hand. It slices like crazy. The only thing that I would consider is just being very careful if you're going to use this for heavier work like batoning. Now this blade is very comfortable in the hand. It does not necessarily have palm swells, but all the edges are very well rounded out. There's not a single sharp spot on this entire handle. These are micarta scales. Now, I'm not sure if these are a type of linen micarta. I suspect they are. Um, I don't have too much information on the actual color, but the ones I have are between a tan and a gray. So a very neat color. I enjoy it very much. This blade was a satin blade, but um, this steel I found really does have a tendency to rust pretty hard and tarnish quickly. So when I first took this out, I did not protect it and I got a pretty good amount of rust on my blade. I took it on a backpacking trip out in a very wet condition and in a leather sheath. So I did end up with a lot of rust, but you know, it cleaned up very nicely. It really was not a big deal. All I had to use was just really a, um, a light scouring pad, like for pots or dishes, you know, and, um, and it cleaned the rust off and it's since taken on its own sort of patina. So um, I do not necessarily have that same satin look that this originally had. I mean, you can kind of see it glistening through there, but at the same time, this is definitely starting to pick up its own unique patina. So back again to the comfort of the blade. It fits very nicely in my hands. It's a good size grip. I really like the overall shape and size of the scales and the amount of texture that they have on them. You'll notice that this does not necessarily have any bolts holding the handle scales onto the tang of the knife, but rather they use fluted rivets. And that to me is fine. I like the look. I like the ability to use these as potential lashing points. And it also does have a dedicated lanyard hole. So overall, you know, the handle is very nice. It feels great in my hands. I like it. It fits me very well. And of course, this blade does have a finger choil, which is really ideal. And I absolutely love a blade with a finger choil. So good overall comfort and some versatility in how you can hold the knife. Now, what I found about this particular blade size, which was a little bit surprising to me, and you know, I, I really don't have any blades in this blade size class per se. I mean, generally I have shorter blades and then I have longer blades and I've never really had too many in this particular size range. About the one that came the closest for me was the Topps Bob, but that at the same time was for as strange as it is, I mean, significantly overbuilt and a little bit unwieldy in a way and not capable of doing some of those finer tasks. But this knife for me has done everything just marvelously um, between the overall blade length size and the ease of use, my ability to do some nice push cuts and, and really controlled little detailed work, the choil when I want it. But even at that, I mean, I typically like a choil, but I found more times than not, I'm really just holding this blade back here doing work. Um, I love that it does not have jimping, so it's very comfortable and this real mild thumb ramp just feels really good. So for long use, I mean, I, I carved with this for about four hours. 
um, is straight. I mean, not continuously, but in, in pretty much a, a session. And I mean, I got a little bit of a hot spot from pushing on the blade, but other than that, I mean, it felt great in my hand. I was able to do everything I wanted it to, and this thing has been absolutely excellent. Now, most of these Swamp Rats do not come with a sheath. You can obviously find different aftermarket options, um, Molly sheaths and, you know, the ballistic nylon sheaths. You could get this Kydex. What I found actually worked very well for me. I have this dangle sheath that's pretty typical for a lot of like battle horse knives or even LT rights. Um, they have very similar sheaths in that fashion. I had this leather dangler battle horse knife sheath from a Woodsman Pro and this knife fits it absolutely perfect. So this has been a great option for me. It's something that has worked quite well. The blade fits in nice, it does not snag. It actually has a similar retention point to that Woodsman Pro, so where this is fluted out a little bit on the leather, it seems to just bottom out at that perfect location. So for me, this has been a wonderful sheath option. And you'll know when I'm getting pretty serious about a knife because I start to kind of customize it and make it my own. And in that regard, I've taken my Punisher bead lanyard. This is my Jonathan Yikich Punisher bead lanyard. I've done a review of this in the past in his work, and it is just wonderful. So I stripped this off of my Arvensis. Unfortunately, my Arvensis got downgraded, and now my Punisher bead will now live on this Swamp Brat Custom Shop Ratman Do. So while I was out backpacking, I started carving this funny little totem. Um, I just I wanted a little project to work on while I was there to spend some time and really get some good use with this knife and so I decided I would just kind of carve myself this little totem. I mean it's nothing incredible but at the same time just a nice way to practice and kind of hang out, take it easy and get some blade time on. So anyway I'm gonna do a little bit of carving here with it right now so that you can sort of see how I've used this and what it's like and just the quality of the edge on this Ratman Do. Okay, so first thing is, you know, basically I found it's very comfortable for nice fine little push cuts. So you see here, I mean, if I'm looking to just do some really nice fine controlled work, really kind of clean up some of these edges. I mean, at the time, I kind of just sort of hack this thing together to round this out uh, but I didn't really get into too much fine detail so if I just sit here now and kind of work trying to take some of these nice little tiny bites easy you know just popping off some of these little high spots and try to kind of clean this up and round it out and smooth it out a little bit more it's very comfortable in my hand has a nice edge can find it with every single little movement I mean I'm never struggling to find this edge while I'm working with this blade no matter what the task is really and uh, again like I said I mean I have just done hours of push cuts with this and just feels really nice um, the lack of jimping uh, really I'd say adds to the user experience here. I would not want jimping on this blade and I'm just thrilled that it does not have it. I think as I kind of mature and uh, use blades more and more I'm finding that I don't necessarily like jimping. At first I thought I did. I, you know I thought I liked at least mild jimping and at this point I think I prefer blades that really don't have any at all. Just kind of cleaning this up a little bit. You know, what I like about this grind is that it does not dig too deep. I mean, some grinds, especially like a um, Scandi grind, will just dig so deep into that wood. But this just kind of goes right where you want it. I mean, if you want to go deep, you can go deep. If you want to stay shallow, you can stay shallow. It gives it a lot of control that I find you don't necessarily get on all knives. So that is pretty cool. Just in terms of how nice and fine this edge is, I thought I'd just do some really simple, smooth, easy controlled curls here for you. I'm just going to try to go as simply light on top of this wood as I can. I mean, you can see how fine these are. A lot of them are just literally flaking off. 
Uh, I might need to go just a touch deeper here, but I mean, I can find that edge really nice and just ride this blade perfectly down the wood. Let me just, uh, just plane this out just a little bit. But anyway, when you look at it, I mean, it's one of those things that with a great blade and the way it feels, it's hard to describe it. You kind of need to feel it. I mean, I can feel this edge just working its way right down the wood. As strange as it sounds, there's actually like a vibration through a blade that you can feel while you're working on wood. And the way this feels, it's just like I'm, I'm literally like feeling the edge translate through the metal. I don't know if that makes any sense to anybody or if I'm just kind of making things up, but like I literally can feel the resonance of that edge on the wood just like translating right through to my thumb. It's like a very good quality positive uh, user input. So it really aids in my like control and overall senses while I'm working on this wood here. Now, so there you can see just how gentle I was going working on these curls. But, you know, if I really wanted to hog some wood, I can absolutely do that too. I mean, without any problem, this thing just absolutely rips. I mean, I can get on that finger choil, but I, like I said, I don't necessarily need to. I kind of like the grip back here for this, pushing off on that thumb ramp and just absolutely ripping through this. And it's taken some really nice, healthy chunks. And you can just hear that edge working right through that wood. So all right guys, there you have it. A real quick look at a Swamp Rat Custom Shop Ratman Do. You know, overall, like I said, I am just totally in love with this blade. Excellent size, excellent weight, total quality. A couple little flaws, if I had to be just a little bit critical, um, you know, I think the, the two main things that are really a little bit of a drawback, but it's certainly things you can work through. Number one is it's prone to rusting, uh, which is fine. Again, so what? Put a patina on here. I have an uncoated blade. I need to be prepared for that. I need to be able to deal with it. So um, either add a patina or keep a good quality. Uh, you know, for me, I use uh, food grade grease and frog lube. Um, so keep it just well protected. Um, and the other thing is, and, and it's not a deal breaker for me. I could see this being an issue for other people. It does not have a sharpened spine. I personally, for what I'm using this for, actually prefer that. I prefer it not being sharpened. I've done a lot of carving. I like that it's just, just, I mean, it's not rounded off, but it's just not sharp either. So, I mean, it's the perfect blade stock for me to really do some push cuts and do a lot of work. But other than that, this thing's been great. Uh, no factory sheath, no big deal. I've come up with a solution, which has worked quite well. And I think it's actually just about the perfect size and shape sheath for this particular knife. Um, overall, a big thumbs up and I hope you really liked what you saw there. So all right guys, thanks for stopping by. I hope you like what you saw. I hope you found it a little bit informative. If you like what you saw, please like, share, and subscribe. And as always, thanks for stopping by. Take care now. I'll see you soon.